Um, so research roundtable next up, we are gonna talk about how universities and students partner with uh, professional working journalists across the country. I'd like to welcome Mark Berkey Gerard to the stage, um, our New Jersey colleague from Rowan University in South Jersey. And uh, I know Mark, this was a topic that you have wanted to dig into for years and you finally got the chance to, and the stage is yours. I'm excited to see what you've found. Great, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm Mark Berkey Gerard. I teach uh, Rowan University, which is in Glassboro, New Jersey, outside of Philadelphia. Uh, and I'm, my research project is looking at um, partnerships between universities and news organizations in the United States. Um, and my interest in this is really personal uh, and also practical as a, as a journalism educator uh, and someone who's done partnerships in the past uh, this is something that I wanted to look at and learn more about. So, um, as I said, um, three minutes. I think she knows. Yes. So, um, yeah, I've done. I've been an educator for about fifteen years, and I've done Hi, multiple um, partnerships uh, over the years, and um, they've all had really great benefits, uh, but they've all had particular challenges as well. So. Um, this quote here, be prepared to fail and pivot, is uh, this is something I, I had in my uh, research and someone I talked to said this, and this really does like kind of sum up um, my experience with partnerships with working with my students and news organizations. So I am all in on collaboration, but I'm also uh, someone who, who realizes the, uh, the challenges and is realistic about uh, what it entails. Um, so my main question was just to understand more about how collaborative journalism is being practiced um, within university journalism education in the United States uh, and to get a better understanding of what's being done and how, uh, how people are doing it. Um, before I jump in, a little, little background on kind of some of the ideas uh, and philosophy um, behind journalism education in the United States. Um, the idea of partnership, of collaboration is, is not new. Uh, this is, it goes back as far as journalism education itself. Um, within journalism education, sometimes uh, we talk about the Missouri method from the University of Missouri. Uh, and this really means things like giving students real world experience, uh, covering, having students cover their communities, publishing for their communities and being guided and coached by professionals. So all those things that are kind of elements of collaborative journalism uh, have been around for a long time. Um, but I think there is a distinctive era where this became more important, kind of in the mid to, to late uh, 2000s, um, when there, there started to be this discussion about uh, modeling journalism education more after medical education. And this idea of a teaching hospital approach kind of emerged. Um, so a couple of key points in that uh, evolution. In, in 2005, uh, a project uh, called News 21 was launched, which was uh, investigative projects uh, partnering students and professional news organizations looking at national issues, uh, had a lot of multimedia. And I think this kind of opened the gates to, um, for more people to do this. Um, there was a, a number of high profile speeches in the late 2000s. Uh, the Dean of the Columbia Journalism School kind of laid out this speech where he uh, imagined uh, thousands of students um, reporting on their local communities and how that could transform uh, journalism, particularly at a time when local journalism uh, was starting to retrench. Um, uh, funders have been very interested in this. So people like uh, Carnegie and Knight have been interested in partnerships. Uh, in 2014, the Online News Association started what was called the Challenge Grant, where they would give specific grants to educators who would partner with news organizations to do innovation and change things in the curriculum. Uh, over the last you know, couple of decades, we've seen the emergence of more investigative centers located within universities, um, schools that have really embrace the teaching hospital approach as central to their um, curriculum. Uh, and so I think this has kind of grown um, 
it, it's grown over the last the couple of years. And this idea of the teaching hospital approach, this kind of came up in my interviews. People talk about this. It's not universally accepted, but I think it really is uh, an important force in how people think about journalism education today. Um, and, and people have uh, studied and defined kind of this teaching hospital approach of, of students working with professional journalists in the context of university to produce content for general audiences uh, in partnership with professional media organizations. And you can see a lot of overlap in this definition to the kind of definitions that we use to talk about collaborative journalism itself. All right, so um, my basic research questions were to look at the characteristics of um, academic and news partnerships, uh, how they're being uh, conducted, some of the benefits, some of the challenges and uh, recommendations for others looking to form their own. Uh, so the way I went about this is, uh, the first thing I did was identify over um, 100 partnerships between colleges or universities and professional news organizations in the United States. Um, so I did this through a number of ways. I looked at the, the center's database. I searched grants, uh, awards, press releases. Um, some of this was word of mouth, but just tried to put together a, a, a spreadsheet and a database of, um, of partnerships and, and started there. Uh, for each of these, I identified the, um, the primary contacts, both uh, faculty and uh, newsrooms. Uh, and I sent out a, a survey uh, to those people and got a 37% response rate. Uh, I followed up with 22 uh, interviews. I conducted these on Zoom. They're about 45 minutes to an hour long uh, with people who agreed to talk about their experience. And then I analyzed the, the data and the interviews uh, for emerging themes. Uh, so something about the respondents that I want to note before I, I jump into the data is that it was uh, very heavily, uh, the responses I got were from uh, academics and people who work in universities. Uh, I think a, a couple of reasons for this, uh, some guesses, is that um, the contact, you know, it's easiest, easier to find contact or uh, information for uh, on a university website as opposed to a news masthead and, and some of those things were a little more difficult to find. Uh, probably also transitions. Uh, I noticed this, that there was the faculty had fewer kind of job transitions as compared to newsrooms. I think faculty are probably more uh, used to restart, uh, responding to academic surveys. Um, and as I found also in my conversations, a lot of these partnerships were really driven by the faculty. And I think that was part of why uh, the people who responded to the surveys and the, and the questions were, were predominantly uh, from faculty. So some of the key findings uh, of the characteristics. Um, and I, th I think the first thing I really, uh, really enjoyed looking at was just all these examples of amazing partnerships being done um, and just a wide diversity of approaches, topics. Uh, and it really, uh, it's, people are doing things that work for their students, that work for their communities and work for their uh, local newsrooms. And um, so that was really a, an amazing thing just to kind of get uh, to experience the breadth of, of the partnerships and the, the really great journalism that's being done by students in collaboration with professionals. Um, some summary uh, from the, the people who responded to my survey. Um, most of them were, were, were local and statewide, most of the partnerships. Um, about 60% of the projects involved undergraduates. Um, um, the majority were relatively small and that there were 50, fewer than 50 students per year uh, were part of this. And about three quarters of them were ongoing. Um, and I, I found this in some ways a little bit surprising because I think uh, sometimes the, one, the projects that win awards or that we hear about tend to be kind of national in scope or investigative or you uh, involve graduate students. Um, and so uh, it was interesting to see that really the bulk of um, the projects uh, are local, they're undergraduates, they're small, and they're something that, that people are continuing to work on. Um, some of the collaborative models, uh, and this comes uh, in part from Sarah's research on the, the models of collaboration, um, is that uh, 
about 39% of them are, are what be characterized as separate. So the, the students and the uh, news organizations are doing things kind of separately from each other. And again, I think this follows the tradition of uh, journalism schools or programs having um, a news service or self-publishing and then uh, other organizations picking up their content and redistributing it or, or republishing it. Um, about 23% uh, are co-creating and that means that the uh, the students and the news professionals are working together uh, to create the content. Um, some other other things where some people define theirs as uh, that the students were assisting the professionals uh, and, and a smaller smallest percent was like integrated where every aspect of the project, uh, the student, the faculty, the newsroom, the funding was all really integrated was uh, was the smallest. But also uh, a number of people said that their their models, they, they took a little bit from each that they might have part of their project, which was really separate or they might have part of their project where they're working together. Um, with uh, on particular stories or particular projects. So I think people are really kind of using their own models and uh, kind of picking and choosing what works well for their, their students and their project. Uh, the, the supervision and editing of these projects is done primarily by faculty. Uh, about a third of them said that they shared them equally, but, uh, but the faculty I think are carrying the bulk of the load of supervision and editing of, of student projects. Uh, I was interested in how students become part of these pro uh, partnerships. Um, so the uh, over 40% are doing it for a class. It's something they sign up for and being a participant in the class means working on this partnership. Uh, the smallest um, kind of category was uh, school media organizations. And, I, and this is in part because they tend to be independent uh, and they're run by the students. And so the onus of partnership would be on the students um, some are extracurricular activities uh, that students are invited to. Some are set up as internships or fellowships. And again, there are some partnerships that are doing a little bit of, of each of these things. Uh, foundation grants are primarily the primary source of funding um, for these projects, followed by academic institutions that are funding these projects themselves. Uh, about 20% of the people said that their projects were unfunded, that they were just doing it with the resources they had, uh, both the newsroom and the, the faculty um, to, to do what they do without any additional funding outside of uh, what they already do. Uh, I asked who was receiving financial, financial compensation for those projects that were funded. Uh, and you can see that it's, it's kind of split between the news organization and the academic uh, institution. And uh, some people were hiring uh, kind of some external help or freelance journalists uh, to help with these projects uh, and particularly to kind of help work with students. Uh, the, the issue of student pay and whether um, students were being paid or should be paid uh, was a, a, this came up a lot in my interviews. Um, people wanted, you know, they felt like if they, especially if they were getting funding and some of the, uh, uh, funding was going to a news organization that they wanted students to be paid for their work as well. Um, but it, you can see that uh, the majority uh, of the of the projects, the students were not receiving any compensation other than a byline or having their work published. So some of the, the key findings, uh, the benefits that I was looking at, uh, four things really kind of emerged. Um, and they were, uh, these were things, again, things that kind of came out in, in the interviews and the data. Uh, training of journalism students, uh, expanding the newsroom size and capacity, covering underserved community and topics, and uh, just bringing youth into uh, legacy news organizations were the, the benefits that, um, that, these are the things that kind of emerged from as the biggest benefits. Um, so about 89% uh, of the people who answered the survey said that their partnership was extremely significant or significant to the mission and goals of the academic program. Uh, it was clear in my conversations and interviews that a lot of the faculty believe that this is really one of the best ways to, um, for students to learn, that these partnerships where they're in uh, working with professionals, they're in newsrooms, 
uh, they're producing content with them is really one of the best ways um, to train journalism students for the future. Uh, the second is um, the ability to expand a newsroom size or capacity. Um, they, the majority of respondents sa said that the student work was excellent or good. Uh, they felt like the public value was significant or extremely significant. Uh, and a, a number of people said that their students, their class or whatever actually was, would actually you know, be a significant increase in the, the press covering local topics. Um, I had one person who said, I tell my students that you are the third largest newsroom in the state, this, you know, the people in my class this semester. Um, so I think just the, the capacity and what can be done and what can be published um, is important as well. Uh, a lot of people mentioned um, underserved communities, topics that weren't being covered. Um, faculty and news editors as well said that they particularly wanted their partnerships to, to cover things that weren't being covered by uh, publications uh, or news outlets uh, at that time. And so, so things like uh, particular, particular neighborhoods, uh, communities of color, topics like immigration, um, uh, poverty, these are the, the kind of things that I think some of these partnerships um, feel like they really do well. Uh, infusing uh, a news organization with youth. This came uh, again from both, both sides. They felt like uh, bringing college students into a newsroom uh, for their, their perspective, their voices, their use of technology, their understanding of culture, um, and just kind of their energy was a benefit um, for both, uh, both parties. So some of the challenges, uh, the key challenges that, that emerged were the academic calendar, um, the skill gap uh, between kind of what students can produce and what's expected, the time and capacity uh, of both of, of all partners to, to pull these projects off, and then kind of the academic versus the newsroom imperatives. Uh, the academic calendar was the thing that came up the most. This is, um, you know, most, a lot of universities run on these kind of nine month schedules. Um, there's holidays, there's breaks. Uh, the end of the semester often kind of creates this artificial deadline. Um, so that this was, this was a big challenge um, about, you know, it's split about 50-50 uh, on whether people were trying to operate their, their partnership year round or whether it was on the academic year um, as people tried to adjust to that. But really kind of that rhythm of a newsroom and the rhythm of a university um, they don't match up. And that was a huge challenge that people talked about. Also the, the skill gap, again, what students can produce, uh, the quality of their work, um, their kind of general knowledge and context for um, you know, whatever the topic is they're covering. Uh, and this was, this is, you know, people said that they felt like the student work was really good, uh, but this is that there has to be an, an extra level of editing an extra level of supervision um, to create uh, content that uh, works for professional news organizations when working with students. Uh, time and capacity, again, was a, was a big thing. Uh, a number of people talked about uh, that as a particular local uh, news organizations have become more stretched in that their capacity and interest in partnership had actually waned in the last, you know, uh, five to 10 years, they just don't have the, the people power to take on anything in addition. Uh, and faculty said this as well, that, that to really run a partnership uh, the way they wanted to, it was uh, a lot of the people do this in addition to their full teaching load. Um, and there were not that many projects that actually had like a dedicated person. This was the only thing they did. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a ask of time and commitment on, on both ends. Uh, the academic kind of the, versus the newsroom uh, imperatives. Um, so the respondents said that, uh, you know, about 70% said that the, that it was, the partnership was significant or extremely significant to the mission and goals of the news organization. But this is lower than what people said um, when, they when they talked about the significance to the goals and missions of the academic program. Um, 
newsrooms and universities are in different businesses in some ways. And so uh, finding places where those uh, goals and those visions can over overlap uh, is really uh, a key to this. So some of the recommendations um, that, uh, that people talked about, um, uh, particularly in the interviews and in, uh, at the end of my survey. Um, and, and I think a lot of these um, will you know, overlap with any kind of um, partnership or collaboration, but some of them in particular for working with students. So finding shared values and objectives um, between uh, what uh, educators want to do and what a newsroom wants to accomplish and trying to uh, find places where those things matched up. Um, an additional level of supervision and mentoring of the students uh, that that working with students is not just another it's not a it's not the same as a partnership between two professional news organizations that it takes that additional level of uh, of supervision mentoring educating uh, and, and in some ways kind of asking the news organization to take on that some of those roles as well um, the main recommendation people said was to to have a dedicated coordinator if possible i know this comes up a lot in conversations about collaborative journalism uh, managing expectations between what the students can accomplish and what the news organization needs. Um, a formal agreement. Uh, and again, this, these can be more complicated, particularly with a university, uh, because they have their own kind of structures and legal, uh, legal issues. Uh, only about a half of the people I surveyed said they used a formal agreement, but this was a recommendation that, that came out. Um, to find deliverable news content and format. Uh, that really works um, for, again, for both. And uh, a, a lot of people talked about that traditional academic structures don't really work well for partnerships in journalism. And also traditional newsroom structures don't work well for partnerships. Uh, and so that it takes some, um, some rethinking uh, and, and changing of the, the, the essential structures um, in order to, to do these in a successful way. Uh, so I want to leave you with uh, some of the quotes from my interviews um, that kind of highlight some of these recommendations. Uh, so again, sharing values on how reporting is done, on ethics, and uh, people who share your passion. Uh, be clear in the purpose and objectives for both organizations. If not, uh, if it's not going to serve both partners, that is unlikely to work. Uh, the news organization has to be ready to provide intensive supervision and mentoring to ensure the quality of the journalism. Uh, you need a designated person who can manage the partnerships and the students. Uh, I would say that the first three or four years of our partnership, it was all about managing expectations of what students were capable of, what sort of time constraints they had with undergraduates who have four or five other classes. Um, getting an MOU signed was a lot of work. Getting it through the university lawyers was a challenge. Uh, it's so important not to fall into the trap of covering breaking news. Uh, think of all the options and models and which ones work best for you and your students, and then which one of those will work best for the news organization. If it doesn't work, uh, if one entity is pushing the other to do things a certain way. Uh, and this, so I think uh, this was really modeled in what I saw in that um, the, the projects are really uh, being tailored to uh, the, the institution, the faculty, the students, uh, the local news organizations they're working with, the communities, and I think that's a, a really um, positive way to go. Uh, so a couple of things going uh, forward um, for this project, um, I will be looking for a way to kind of share um, the list of partnerships. Um, I'll be submitting this for peer review. Uh, I would love to do site visits um, and some case studies of this in the future. Uh, so thank you for your time and I welcome yeah. thank questions. You, yeah. Yeah, there were a few questions in the chat. One thing is, yeah. when um, if folks want to get more information or dig into this research, will you? Is it? Uh, you said it's going to go through peer review. Do you have any yes. idea where you might publish or when you might publish? Uh, my plan fine. is to do that this summer, so this I'll, summer. I will have more yeah information Great. about that this summer. Great, that sounds good. Okay, cool. Let me throw you a couple of questions before we wrap yeah. um, for our next um, session. So um, Robin asks, does the semester timeline and graduation turnover? affect a student newsroom collaboration with a professional organization? How long does a local collaboration typically typically go for? Um, and also before you answer that, I also wanted to mention that Kathy Best is here too. Um, and Kathy runs some of the you know biggest and best student uh, professional collabs in the country. So folks, you can also message Kathy too. Sorry, Kathy, putting you on the spot. Uh, but Mark, tell us about the semester timeline and how that 
um, impacts? Yeah, I think um, people talked about this as a big challenge that you're you're retraining students. You know, if you're running it as a semester project, you're kind of you're training them uh, and then kind of preparing them to do the work. Um, so some people are doing kind of multi-stage where they have one semester where they're training and kind of organizing them uh, so that they're ready to do things the second semester. Um, some places are doing it where they are, you know, they do it through the year and then they do work over the summer. So I think people are trying to come up with um, ways that it, you know, the project doesn't turn over every 15 weeks. Um, yeah. And that's a challenge. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Joellen Kaiser asks, did you run into collaborations where the relationship was initiated by the newsroom and the newsroom mentored students with faculty mainly blessing that relationship? Um, and if so, did those succeed or any thoughts around that? That's a good question. I, don't, uh, I can't think of anything in, in particular. Um, I didn't ask um, kind of where, you know, how the project was initiated. Um, often in the uh, the conversations, it seemed like the, the faculty was looking for a news partner uh, or that uh, so faculty, X organization periodistica. news industry as well already. And so they were going back to their newsroom contacts yes. um, when they wanted to create some kind of partnership. But I can't think of a specific example uh, that I know of that, that kind of went the other way. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, another question. Can you give an example of a successful small student newsroom partnership with a local story? With a professional media organization, what was the topic? Yeah, um, and, and again, these range from like a couple students to you know two hundred plus students. So it was it was really interesting. Um, in West Virginia, um, there was a project where it was three students working with a professor um, doing uh, uh, audio stories for the local NPR affiliate on water quality issues in in West Virginia around mining. Um, and that was like a project that got uh, national attention um, from, and it was really just a handful of students um, and, a, and a professor who were doing that. So, mm -hmm. great, thank you, Mark. There, there's, yeah, there's, there's no limits to like you know how big or small uh, these things can be. Yes, excellent. Um, let's see, one other question, and we've got about two minutes here left. So, uh, time check. Um, did you find any faculty resistant to collaboration? Yes, that was something that uh, it did come up. It's, it's not in my talk here, but um, faculty talked about uh, the importance of getting other faculty to buy in, um, yeah. that not all journalism faculty thought these partnerships were worth the time and the effort, and particularly the effort that goes above and beyond um, their normal duties. So yeah, that was a conversation, was to get the importance of buy-in from other faculty, from the dean, from the university uh, as a whole, which may not also always understand, um, particularly if the subject matter is something that, you know, isn't great PR for the university, <laughs> um, that, that trying to educate all, all parties about the, the benefit that of this is important. Yep. Yep, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and this is a methodology question. Uh, last question, and then we'll move on. Um, did you identify or promise anonymity to your interview subjects? Yes. You did. You, anonymity? Yes. Yes, okay. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, that they would not, the, I, they would not be identified by, by yes. us, yes. Yeah, great. Well, um, I really look forward to seeing this all in print. Um, and we will, you know, Mark, like I told you before, I'd love to share this with our collaboration community um, around the world, you know, send it in our newsletter, um, on our listserv, once you get to that point where you're um, published. And can we share your slides too with folks? Afterwards? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Great. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you.